kid I was the kind of kid that brought home the kittens that I would find and feed them you know but that boy was long long lost so that yeah. that day in the hotel room floor I'm looking up and I'm cursing God out I says you know where were you when I was a kid and I used to sit on the end of my bed rocking back and forth every day why God you're not real right I just I don't know why it came over me I was just there and I says you know what but that day in the hotel room floor was the first time I ever told myself you know what I'm going to die today. I'm done. If I can get to the bathroom, I'm going to find something in the bathroom. I'm going to end it. I'm going to take a razor. I'm going to cut my juggler, bleed out, and die. And that day, I came to my piece on the floor that I'm, I'm going to die today. And I said, God, I have one more deal, just one. Before I die today, before I go all my life, okay, I've never known the love of a woman. I've never known the love of family. I've never known the love of nobody. And anyway, be, but before I die today, there's only one thing I want to know, and there's only one thing I want to feel. I want to know what love is. 
the second I said it, man, my heart was so full of love. It was incredible, man. And I swear it was like God, I, if it was Jesus Christ himself, if it was an angel, something was holding me on the floor. And it was holding me tight. And my heart was so soft that everything changed. Like my heart just filled up and I couldn't stop crying, man. I cried for hours on the floor. And I couldn't believe that I ever doubted that there was a God. I couldn't believe it. And I begged and I begged forgiveness. And I had no doubt in my mind at all that I'd been forgiven. Because I felt in my heart that everything was okay. Don't worry about nothing. I got you. You know? And I know there was on the floor with me and an angel or Jesus. Whichever. I know there was something on the floor from God that was holding me. Something was holding me. Hey. You okay? What are you doing here? Um, well, I came to say goodbye and to give you this. I'm leaving to Haiti for two months next week. Haiti? But you just got back. Well, they still need help. <laughs> Look, whatever you're going through, Jake, I want you to know that... that I care, and that God cares, and that... God. You're kidding me, right? What God? The God that loves you. You really believe that? Yes, I do. With all my heart. What do you know about real pain, Becca? You're just a, a good little church girl now who's gonna wind up marrying some good little church boy one day and living happily ever after. There's something I never told you. Um, when you were living in Nashville after my father died, my mama flipped out and uh, And I started using every kind of drug I could get a hold of. When my mom found out, she said I could get help or she was kicking me out of the house. And so being the angry person that I was, I just did more and more drugs. And then one day when I was already high, I just wanted to end it all. But just before I cut my wrist, I said a prayer, asking God to forgive, and he answered, because I heard a voice that said, you need to ask God to save you. <laughs> so do I believe in a God that loves me, that loves you? Saw my dad the other day. Until today, I believed without a doubt. I had gone down this road way too far to turn. Carry the weight of the past on my back to the day I die. 
thanks to you Now I realize That every lie that's been told Can be untold And every soul that's been sold Can be unsold Every angry word that's been spoken Can be unspoken And every heart that's been broken be unbroken Every crime against humanity Every genocide Every unspeakable act of oppression and tyranny Every act of terrorism Every starving nation ignored. Every drop of martyred blood. Every orphan and widow abandoned. Every stranger in need passed by. Every deviant and perverse lifestyle. Every marriage torn asunder. Every word uttered in hate. Every injustice. Every theft. Every grudge, every bitterness, every lust, every fear, every lie, every doubt, every one. Oh, the weight of the cross. Oh, the strength of the one who bears it. to experience are true. They will change your life if you let them. For they come from the very heart of God. He loves you. And He is the Father you have been looking for all your life. This is His love letter to you. on your head are numbered for you were made in my image in me you live and move and have your being for you are my offspring I knew you even before you were conceived I chose you when I planned creation you were not a mistake for all your days are written in my book I determined the exact time of your birth and where you would live. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I knit you together in your mother's womb and brought you forth on the day you were born. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. I am not distant and angry, but am the complete expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, simply because you are my child and I am your father. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could, for I am the perfect father. 
every good gift that you receive comes from my hand. For I am your provider and I meet all your needs. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope. Because I love you with an everlasting love. My thoughts toward you are countless as the sand on the seashore. And I rejoice over you with singing. I will never stop doing good to you. For you are my treasured possession. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul. And I want to show you great and marvelous things. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. Delight in me and I will give you the desires of your heart. For it is I who gave you those desires. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. For I am your greatest encourager. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. As a shepherd carries a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. One day, I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I'll take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth. I am your Father, and I love you even as I love my Son, Jesus. For in Jesus, my love for you is revealed. He is the exact representation of my being. He came to demonstrate that I am for you, not against you, and to tell you that I am not counting your sins. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. His death was the ultimate expression of my love for you. I gave up everything I love that I might gain your love. If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me. Nothing will ever separate you from my love again. Come home and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. I have always been father and will always be father. My question is, will you be my child? I am waiting for you. Love, your dad, almighty God. Yesterday, you came to lift me up As light as straw and brittle as a bird Today, I weigh less than a shadow on the wall Just one more whisper of a voice unheard Tomorrow, leave the windows open as fear grows. Please hold me in your arms. Won't you help me if you can to shake this anger? I need your gentle hands to keep me calm. 
This fire beneath my skin I can't believe you love me I never thought you'd come I guess I misjudged love Between a father and his son Never said Come together The hidden truth No longer haunting me Tonight We touched On things that were never spoken That kind of understanding Sets me free Cause I My skin, I can't believe you love me. I never thought you'd come. I guess I misjudged love between a father and his son. Jacob was wandering through the region of Haran, when all of a sudden, he saw Rachel. And immediately, he knew she had to be his. So he volunteered to work seven long years in exchange for her hand. Only problem was, after seven long years, he was given the wrong girl. Leah. So Jacob set out to work another seven long years to get his Rachel. Love will make you do crazy things. Hosea was a prophet with one unique calling from God. Marry that prostitute, God said. Now Gomer was not the ideal wife. She ran away, she gave herself to other men, but Hosea had a calling. And no matter how many times she ran away, no matter how many men she gave herself to, Hosea still loved her. Love will make you do crazy things. King Solomon had a good head on his shoulders, a smart guy, the wisest that ever lived, they say. But nothing could stop him from losing his mind every time he saw his beloved. He screamed of his love from the mountaintop. He shouted his devotion in the valley. He even wrote it all down and let millions of people read it. Love will make you do crazy things. So it's no wonder the Bible calls us the Bride of Christ. And from the beginning of time, Christ has been pursuing his bride, pursuing her beyond the walls of the garden, beyond her disobedience, pursuing her in the midst of her rebellion, in spite of her wickedness, pursuing her to the lands of foreign gods in the midst of her unfaithfulness, because our disobedience to God's will can never outweigh Christ's obedience to it. 
Our wickedness can never outweigh His goodness. Our unfaithfulness can never outweigh His faithfulness. We give ourselves to other gods, but He still loves His bride. He shouts of His love for us through every word written in the scriptures, and He pursues us to immeasurable lengths, even death on a cross, because with Christ, it isn't till death do us part. It is only through his death that we have assurance that we will never part from him and we will spend eternity together. Love will make you do crazy things. This is more than a metaphor.
that a man had a dream. He dreamed that he was walking along the beach with the Lord. Across the skies flash scenes from his life. For each scene he noticed two set of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. When the last scene of his life flashed before him, he looked back at the footprints in the sand. He noticed that many times along the path of his life, there was only one set of footprints in the sand. He also noticed that it happened at the very lowest and saddest times in his life. This really bothered him and he questioned the Lord about it. Dear Lord, you said that once I decided to follow you, you would walk with me all the way. But I have noticed that during the most troublesome times in my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why when I needed you most, you wouldn't leave me. The Lord replied, my son, my precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During your time of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. You are my strength when I have none. You are my feet when I cannot walk. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for your sacrifice. Father, I just want to thank you today that I can come and be with you. Thank you, Father, that you sent your Son. You gave his life so that I could know you. And Father, you love me. Father, it just goes beyond my understanding to imagine that way back in time before the world even began, you conceived me and everything that I am. You imagined the person that I would be today way back in time. You thought about me, Father. And then in your Amazing love. Father, you conceived me in your mind.
that you would cause the day to come where I would come into this world. Father, you truly are my Father. For I came from you. Because, Father, I really am your Son. While I was being carried in my mother's womb, Father, you were there knitting me together as your word says. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Where do I, were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. And when I awake, I am still with you. Father, the truth of your words caused my heart to love you more. The day that I was born, Father, you, you were there and you welcomed me into this world that you've created. You've made it for all of us, Father, that we could live in this wonderful world in this wonderful environment. The stars above and the clouds that move across the face of the earth. Father, you, you made all these things just as a place for us to live. You decided the day that I would be born and you decided the place that I would live. And when I finally came into this world, your Father's heart was there to welcome me. Oh, Father, you really are my Father. You've watched over me all the days of my life. And Father, in the times when things were difficult for me, you were still there watching over me. Looking after me, you heard my childhood prayers. Oh, Father, I thank you that I really am your son. And you sent your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for me so that I could come to know you. Father, you are a wonderful father. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me, but I have still and quieted my soul like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child is my soul within me. Father, I simply rest in you. So thank you that you have all things in hand. There's nothing, Father, of my life that is too great for you to care after, to work out and to look into the future to solve. Father, I thank you that I am your son. I thank you that I am your child.
Judgment from William S. Plumer, The Rock of Our Salvation, 1867. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. God has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world. Respecting this day, several things are noticeable. All shall be judged. Saints and sinners, great and small, living and dead, the servant and his master, the prisoner at the bar and the judge who sat on his trial, the assassin and the assassinated, the seducer and his victim, the invader and the invaded, the hireling and his oppressor, the king and his subjects, the fool and the wise man, the persecutor and the persecuted, the apostate, the hypocrite, the child of God and the child of the devil shall all be there. No one shall be so mighty and no one shall be so lowly as to elude the eye or the sentence of him who shall sit upon the throne of judgment. What a massive multitude will this be when prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, saints of all ages, when sinners, liars, infidels, blasphemers, moralists, and murderers shall all be there, when the sea and the dry land shall give up their dead, when death and hell shall deliver up the dead who are in them, when all who lived before the flood, all who have lived since the flood, and all who shall have lived to the end of time shall stand before God. This will be the first and the last assembly in which are found every person whom God ever made. To God it is a certain and fixed day. He has appointed it. Acts chapter 17 verse 31. Nothing can hasten it, nothing can retard it. The purpose of God concerning it is fixed, unalterable. To all creatures it is an unknown day. Of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven. The day of judgment will be the great day. It will be the greatest day in the annals of the universe. It is the day for which all other days were made. This day is so well known to inspired men that they call it the day, that day, as preeminent over all others. It will be the last day. After it, time will be no more. Time will cease to exist. Duration will no more be measured by seconds, minutes, days, months, years, centuries, cycles, but all will be boundless, shoreless, fathomless, unmeasured eternity. It will be a day of astounding exposures. Villainy will be covered up no more. Every disguise will be taken away. There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hidden that shall not be known. It will be a day of intense excitement. There will be no listless spectators of those scenes. Every faculty of the intellect and of emotion will be aroused to the highest possible exercise. Men may sleep under sermons concerning the judgment, but they will not be dull when they go to judgment. It will also be a day of final separation. The precious and the vile, the wheat and the tares, the sheep and the goats, saints and sinners, shall no longer mingle together. The separation of this day will be final. The righteous and the wicked shall part that day to meet no more. It shall be a day of despair to all the unregenerate. Everywhere sinners will be crying to the rocks and the mountains, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the land. Was ever despair more dreadful than this? This will be a day full of surprise. Not only will it come unexpectedly, but its awards will fill both saints and sinners with astonishment. So Christ teaches at length in Matthew chapter 25. The wicked will be amazed that they are lost. They will be especially surprised that God sets no value on their self-righteousness. The sons of God will receive more honor than they ever ask or thought of. The sons of Belial will receive more wrath than they ever feared. Christians will marvel why they are saved. Sinners will wonder why they are not saved. 
many will be lost, contrary to the opinions formed of them by their neighbors. Many will be lost, contrary to the opinions they had formed of themselves. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. The judgment is coming. The judge stands at the door. The time is short. Who is this Jesus of Nazareth? I wonder if you know him. To you, he may be an idea or a concept, a historical figure or a great philosopher. But did you know that according to scriptures, he is the creator of the universe? Did you know that his eternality is supreme and that he never changes? Did you know that his knowledge is ultimate and that his wisdom is never perplexed by any problem or situation? Did you know that he has all authority under heaven and earth and his providence is supreme, so much so that not a single leaf has ever fallen off a tree without him knowing? Did you know that his word is absolute, upholding the entire universe, atom by Adam, outlasting it by an eternity? Did you know of his completeness and gladness in the fellowship of the Trinity, infinite joy in the universe, which is upon every born-again believer? Did you know of his trustworthiness, that he never, ever breaks a promise? Did you know of his grace which gives us life and justifies the ungodly? Did you know of his love which abound in him so immensely that no man can measure or fully understand? Did you know that he holds every mystery in his hands as he told John, I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Did you know of his supreme justice, that he will render all accounts settled and no injustice will remain? Did you know that one day you and I will stand before this majestic being? Whether you agree or not, believe in him or not, or belong to whatever religion. Oh, but did you know of the sovereignty of his power to cleanse, forgive, and heal? Did you know that in his name is salvation to all men and women, regardless of beliefs or past history? And did you know that you and I were created with the purpose to know Yeshua HaMashiach, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, this infinite and massive God? This is the God to know and serve. Press on to know him, to know him, to know him, to know him. I want to see a different me. I want to change my dream. I want to feel again like it's supposed to be. I want to change my mind I want to fix my heart Open up my window Just to scare off the dark So the other day I got a message on Facebook that said, John, I love the message of your videos, 
but not if it's coming from you. There are choices you've made in your past that render you not qualified to spread such a message. And for me, that was hard to hear because the hypocritical Christian is something I fear. To be put in a category like that, I, I could think of nothing worse. So maybe there's something I should have said first. You see, I can't and won't and don't claim to be perfect. In fact, most times I'm not even good. I'll take responsibility for the mistakes I've made and the hurts I've caused. I got more than I probably should. But would God use that against me? Making good coming from my life impossible? Forgives me but refuses to use me? I don't believe in that gospel. I believe in the God of Moses. Moses was an orphan and a murderer with a stutter and a price on his head. Yet God chose this killer to be a fulfiller, performing miracles, leading his people, and making rivers flow red. I believe in the God of David. David, the shepherd boy who turned into a king, a terrible father and an adulterer from the start. Yet even with wrongdoings and iniquity, we remember him as the man after God's own heart. Mary Magdalene was a prostitute, living a life without direction. Matthew was a tax collector, the lowest of the low, yet they both walked and talked and witnessed Christ's perfection. Did God choose the Pharisees? The self-righteous and pompous full of laws and pretension? Or did he choose cowardly Peter and persecuting Paul to spread the message of Christ's redemption? All these heroes in the Bible, not a one of them was likely. Leaning not on themselves, they leaned on God. And you know what God is? He is mighty. So can God use me? A broken, steaming mess? And can God use him or her or you? I'm here to tell you right now that the answer is yes. God can and will use anybody, even if you only go to church on Christmas. Does he only speak through the preacher? No, God is in a different business because believing in the Lord isn't living a perfect Walgreens life, always doing right. It's letting his light shine from within and letting his word be your tutor. He'll take your broken past, helping you step in to a more hopeful future because it wasn't for perfection that Jesus died on that cross. It was for the unhealthy so the sick could serve the sick and seek and save the lost. Because in the end, these words and these lights and these cameras and this video, it's not about me. It's about God. And with God, it's never about who you were but about who you will be. It's God's story for the world, and we're just playing our parts. So if you're out there feeling not qualified, that's great, because not qualified is where he starts. There are approximately 2 billion heartbeats in the human lifespan. And the human mind processes, on average, 47,000 thoughts in a single day. Over 17 million a year and over 1 billion in a lifetime. That's, That's hundreds, hundreds of millions of questions, questions, questions in a human life. life. Of those questions, of these those three questions, resound. These three resound. Who am I? Why am I here? Where did it come, come from? from? These three questions led to an even bigger these question. These three questions lead to an even bigger question. These three questions led to an even bigger question. A question that answers all questions. A question that answers all questions. All questions. Do you know him? Do, 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 do you know you know him? Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduringly strong. He's in 
entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he purifies the weak. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. And his yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him for you. He's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You see, you can't get him off of your head. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Tyler couldn't find any fault in him. Terror couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah! Much more important, though, than knowing all the facts about creation and how God made the world and all that is to know for sure you're going to heaven. If you believed God made the world and you believed in the flood in the days of Noah and you believed the whole Bible but you never did get saved, you'd still die and go to hell. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse number 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible says we're all sinners. We've all broken God's laws. See, God gave the law, and we have disobeyed. If you even just look at the Ten Commandments, let alone the other laws, we've broken them. We're guilty. We have disobeyed God's laws, plain and simple. When I was 16 years old, a friend of mine said, Kent, do you know if you're going to heaven? I said, oh, I don't know. I've been baptized and catechized and pasteurized and homogenized. You know, what else is there? And he said, are you going to heaven? I said, I don't know. He showed me from the Bible I was a sinner. I've disobeyed God's laws. I said, well, no argument out of me. You're right, I have. Then the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. Wages is something you earn, and you have earned death because of your sin. So have I. We deserve to die. We're guilty. God would be perfectly fair in sending us all to hell. But it goes on to say, the gift of God is eternal life. See, just like your parents gave you the gift of physical life, when you got born, God wants to give you a gift of eternal life. And the only way to get it is through Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. So my friend said, Kent, you're a sinner. I said, I agree. He said, you deserve to go to hell. You deserve death. That's eternal death. I said, yeah, I agree. But Jesus died for you, and he wants to take you to heaven. He wants to forgive you and save you. Then he showed me Romans chapter 10 and verse number 13, which says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
He said, Kent, if you'd like to ask the Lord to save you, he'd do it right now. And as two people actually worked on me. One was my friend Tim, and he said, would you like to get saved after he showed me this? And I said, no, I don't want that. Because if I ask the Lord to come in my heart and save me, then he's going to want to change my life. About a month later, my brother got saved. And my brother took me down to a University of Illinois where he was going to school, or Illinois State University in Bloomington, Illinois. And we visited a little church there, and my brother had just been saved a couple of weeks, and he brought me to church with him, and some of the guys there showed me and said, Kent, you need to ask the Lord to save you. And he said, boy, I sure do. I've been thinking about it. You're right, I'm ready. And so on that day, February 9th, 1969, I prayed and I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Would you forgive me and save me right now? And he did, just like he promised right here. That was my birthday into God's family. Hey, if you're not sure you're going to heaven, why don't you ask the Lord to save you? It really is that simple. Just pray with me right now. Just say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I've broken your laws, and I'm sorry. Lord, I believe you died for me. Would you please forgive my sin and save me right now? Amen. Well, friend, if you just ask the Lord to come in your heart and save you, the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You've got God's promise you're going to heaven. What you need to do is write this date and the time down in the front of your Bible someplace because the devil will certainly try to make you doubt that you're going to heaven. And you need to start reading your Bible. You need to start going to a good church that believes the Bible and start learning what this book says and read God's Word. As a newborn babe, you need to grow by desiring the sincere milk of the Word. The more you read this book, the more you grow to be a good Christian. Call us and let us know or write us a letter. We'd be glad to rejoice with you and give you some information to help you grow closer to the Lord in your new life. If we can be any help, don't hesitate to call. Thank you so much. Who is this Jesus of Nazareth? I wonder if you know him. To you, he may be an idea or a concept, a historical figure or a great philosopher. But did you know that according to scriptures, he is the creator of the universe? Did you know that his eternality is supreme and that he never changes? Did you know that his knowledge is ultimate and that his wisdom is never perplexed by any problem or situation? Did you know that he has all authority under heaven and earth and his providence is supreme, so much so that not a single leaf has ever fallen off a tree without him knowing? Did you know that his word is absolute, upholding the entire universe, atom by Adam, outlasting it by an eternity? Did you know of his completeness and gladness in the fellowship of the Trinity, infinite joy in the universe, which is upon every born-again believer? Did you know of his trustworthiness, that he never, ever breaks a promise? Did you know of his grace, which gives us life and justifies the ungodly? Did you know of his love, which abound in him so immensely that no man can measure or fully understand? Did you know that he holds every mystery in his hands as he told John, I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Did you know of his supreme justice that he will render all accounts settled and no injustice will remain? Did you know that one day you and I will stand before this majestic being? Whether you agree or not, believe in him or not, or belong to whatever religion. Oh, but did you know of the sovereignty of his power to cleanse, forgive, and heal? Did you know that in his name is salvation to all men and women, regardless of beliefs or past history? And did you know that you and I were created with the purpose to know Yeshua HaMashiach, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, this infinite and massive God? This is the God to know and serve. Press on to know Him.